Hello, welcome to Quok Talk. I'm Crystal here on Think Tech. Tuesday rainy morning, we're going to talk about layers. What does that mean? I mean, everybody has layers, yeah? You know, you peel them off. Actually, there's this really kind of a corny uh, metaphor. I remember as a kid I used that, you know, life is like an onion. You have to peel it layer by layer, and the more you peel, the more it hurts your eyes. Okay, I know, see she stuff. But on terms of, in terms of the body, when we peel off layers, or yes, women, when we peel off layers, we're revealing more and more about ourselves and exposing more and more about ourselves that maybe becomes to a point of vulnerability that we don't want to be in, but maybe it's a very good place to be in. It's a really interesting place to explore, and today we're going to do that with two amazing women who have their own layers, and we hope to kind of expose their layers and discuss why, why we as women have these things and why we are vulnerable um, and, and in relation to our bodies and, and nudity and why all that is all kind of like this sensitive, um, I don't want to say controversial, but it is. It's people don't want to go there. People don't want to reveal themselves. So let's talk about that. Let's introduce our wonderful guest. Next to me is Charlotte Clinch, all the way from New York. Actually, I knew her from Hong Kong as a, like a young, young girl, and now she's all grown up, and she's a teacher herself at a uh, school for disa disabled for students? special needs, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. young kids, very yep. young. Yes, um, we go from pre-K to about um, grade six. Okay, yeah. so your perspective on life is very interesting. I'm going to tap into that in a bit. Um, and again, so we have a very talented uh, dancer choreographer, Shin Ru Yong, um, from Body Portal Theater, who's actually doing a performance. And I have the privilege of working with Shin Ru recently um, with this workshop, very interesting experimental workshop on how you um, feel about your body and, and more. So Shin Ru, welcome. Thank you. Uh, so let's let's start with the concept of um, layers. Do you want to talk about your own layers first as on a personal level and what you think or when it is that you reveal yourself the most? Yeah, oh, well, this is a big topic. I know. <laughs> Good morning. Going right in. Sorry. <laughs> you want to go ahead? Um, I think definitely having just graduated in May um, and moving to New York, what's made me have to tap into my own layers rather than kind of revealing it to other people. I think it's having to tap into and seeing that vulnerability for myself um, has been moving to a new city all by myself sure. to start working and having those moments where I'm, I'm just alone by myself, not having you know an institution behind me, my family's in Hong Kong, and having to start this new career um, and meet new people it's those moments where I'm not doing anything and I don't have people around and I'm kind of, I have to sit with just me and the kind of, this feeling of being lonely but actually being able to really understand myself and mm. see where I am at that moment. It's yeah. been very, it's been hard but also very, very revealing. And that reveals actually uh, on the contrast is a lot of people are so consumed with their work or their their lives, their routines that they don't have time to peel those layers and so they keep it hidden for a long time or never release themselves. What about you, Shinru? What are your layers? Um, I really identify with that. I've moved around a lot on my own um, and it's super revealing, right? Because you you put yourself out there. You put yourself out there in a new situation, uh, you have to adjust, you have to figure out a new culture, a new language, um, all the nuances of that. So I think, I, I think for me, layers is something I take off and I put on, you know, <laughs> based on the situation. Like, right. I have these shields that I put up. Um, and, then it's, and then as I've moved around a lot, I, I've noticed for myself that um, I don't let, I don't take off layers unless I really feel comfortable, and it takes me a long time. Mm -hmm. So that's for me personally, and um, we talked a bit about this in the workshop too. Yeah. Is that, um, you know, for my work, it requires that I'm, I'm very out, outgoing, or at least uh, uh, warm and friendly and a people person. But I'm actually a huge introvert, huh. and I just want to hide away all the time. You know, like I, I really need my own like reboot time. So that's a layer too. Is like I have to, I have to do this in order to do the work that I really care about, but. You know, then I, have, I like to put those layers back on right. um, and recharge. So, 
I think layers is, I mean, there's so many kinds. I know. Yeah. And, and as women, there is a specific type too. It's, it's mm -hmm. so complicated and intricate. In the workshop, again, you mentioned how you uh, exploring through the process of uh, figuring out, discovering yourself in a particular type of dances, as a woman and having a woman's body, well, at what point do you um, strip off all your layers to reveal yourself and while not being exploited? You know, there's a real kind of a fine line. Oh, it's, yeah, <laughs> there's a, um, yeah, because there's a spectrum, you know, there's a spectrum of being an object and being a subject, uh -huh. you know, and so where do you play in that, and especially if you're using your body in a performing, in a performing setting, so whether that's uh, music or acting, but in particular dance, because you're using your body as the, as the medium. So um, I'm always kind of looking at, at where I, where I'm, intentionally trying to be because it's 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 fine if you're saying you know look at my body i'm a spectacle i'm going to entertain you that's a choice right, right and that's right. It's completely valid uh, but then at what points do i want to say i want you to see me beyond my body but you have to see me through my body right because that's, that's right. how we're that's right. how we're interacting and in everyday life too so um i think being aware of that being aware that there's that range is kind of where i start um because everyone's always going to visually it's a it's a visual art as well dance right so they're going to use their eyes but then they're also for me it's about um getting them to feel their own bodies through what i'm doing so hmm. i think you know through the workshop you're seeing a little bit of that of the kinesthetic empathy so beyond seeing my body as a woman's body and as an object you're also being able to feel what i'm feeling so, for example, when I was dancing blindfold or, you know, some of the exercises we've done, it's like you start to be in somebody else's skin and saying, oh, I know that this feels like that, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take them and, and have them feel that too. So it's getting someone to feel what you're feeling, and I think that's when, um, that's when I make that choice and I know that people are touched and moved that way. It's, yeah. I consider it success in that you see me as a woman's body, and, and, but yet you see me as, as more than that and through the layers of all that. But that's, it's yeah. something, it's so um, subjective because as an audience, you don't know, you can't control the audience to say, I want you to see through me, through my past, my body, and past all these layers to reveal something else. I mean, how do you, how do you feel, I mean, as, as the concept of a woman as an object, I mean, let's place it into a kind of a realistic situation. Mm -hmm. You know, going to, I don't know, a bar, I don't know if you guys ever go to a situation <laughs> where you're exposed Mm -hmm. two elements of contact mm -hmm. and relationship possibilities how do you sh or do you put on a shield or do you uh, release a little bit so that you can open up for people to what want to contact you you know mm -hmm. where are the signs how do you do that I think that um, it's very hard because what's the, your the initial intention um, maybe yeah and also I feel like the the initial you know um, what what you see first is, is someone's looks and someone's yes. you know body and and it it is hard to to you know have to just completely have that separate to to getting to know the inside because as you said to to really understand someone you need to go through you know their body first. Um, I think that it, it it is very hard to kind of have those two separate situations and I think it's very hard for us as women to be okay with, with having that first layer, be our, our bodies and being our looks. Mm -hmm. um, and then understanding that after that comes what we have inside. Right. Um, but, it, you know, in a bar setting, I think that okay, it's such so a Okay, so maybe bar is yeah, a exactly. bad example. <laughs> it's such a superficial kind it of, is. you know, um, environment that I feel like it, rarely you, you can have like a, a great in-depth conversation. True, with okay, <laughs> scrap that. Uh, how do you feel about the other extreme of covering yourself up and revealing in ways that you don't reveal? I mean, is there that? Well, okay, culturally, let's just say, because we have a common denominator of, of, of having lived in Asia, mm -hmm. um, you know, pe Chinese people are very protective. They have many, many ways they never reveal it, even to their families. Mm -hmm. So how does that affect how we express ourselves, you know, culturally? Wow, that's another can of worms, yeah. right? Okay, well, let's yeah. hone in on that. Um, culturally, uh, the cultural concept of the body. Yeah. Because, you know, like nudity, 
Mm-hmm. In here in, in the States, everybody is so comfortable with their bodies yes. that it's no issue, right? Mm-hmm. To touch and feel and to f- expose. Mm-hmm. But in Asia, it's, it's like you don't do that. Yeah. No, you don't. Yeah, that was really hard for me when I first moved to Taiwan. It was yeah. just, you know, you go in for the hug and then there's yeah. no hug. <laughs> I've done that too. And you kind of do yeah. the yeah. nod. Yeah, yeah. 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 you don't even shake hands. So for me, it was very disconcerting that I wouldn't, have to, wouldn't be able to say, oh, I've met you now and there's a right. moment of contact. Um, yeah, so that I think, yeah, it's very cultural, and I was reminded of that as I facilitate these workshops, that everybody has a different sense of comfort yeah. in terms of how much they're touched. Um, and I think for me as a choreographer or as a workshop facilitator, I just have to be sensitive and provide you know, ins and outs and say if you're uncomfortable. But is there some common denominator as human beings mm-hmm. where we feel that we need that um, to, to expose ourselves, to know that touch is good, mm-hmm. um, you know, while respecting certain cultural walls and boundaries. Yeah. yeah. Uh, common denominator. I mean, I always say we're always, we're always, we're all bodies moving through space and time. So when people say they can't dance, I'm like, well, we're all in our bodies. Right, you're still right? moving. Um, in terms of touch, and I don't know, because I feel like that is so super specific. Like even someone said, you know, in some cultures, you can't even touch someone else's head. That's right. really disrespectful. Right. Right. Or touch someone's feet, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And it's, it's yeah. I don't know what the common denominator is. I do believe we all need to be touched. Yes. And as babies, you know, you, you, that's so much your development is your sense of, of touch and contact and affection and it develops your sense of proprioception and all of that and balance, you know. But isn't it interesting so. that you brought up babies? You know, we, we, all, we are so embracing of babies. We love to, uh, you know, cuddle them and everything. But when you grow up and uh, being an Asian maybe, you kind of distance yourself from that after mm-hmm. a while. Yeah, no, definitely. So everybody starts off kind of the same, but then we all end up doing different things with our bodies. It's funny, growing up, um, definitely with my parents, because my father is English and uh, my mom, she's Hong Kong Chinese, I I would definitely say, like, you know, we were a very open family and and touch was, um, like, a comfortable thing in our family. But from my extended Chinese family, I think that definitely that was never there. And it was always a very, even though, you know, I was very loved by them, it was never that comfort of, you know, hugging was a very brief kind of moment when you said hello um, and then uh, when you say goodbye but in the recent years actually I have I have kind of introduced that to my family a little bit more because what, affection yes Display and like affection. and touch and and being more comfortable with it um, I think with my grandfather with his old age he definitely is embracing it more um, but I kind of started to explore it when I started taking up yoga a few years ago and just understanding that I have these urges sometimes to, to be connected with my family or my friends when we're experiencing certain things. Um, kind of like if you know me and my friends went to a concert, the kind of like <coughs> connection that I wanted to have with them uh-huh. while we were experiencing the same uh-huh. input was maybe to just, you know, put that like have like an embrace or right. hold hands or something like that where I feel people are very uncomfortable with it. Huh. But once you embrace it, I feel that it really does you, you feel you this have to kind of release connection. it. You have to yeah. allow yourself to release it. And it's interesting you mentioned yoga because yoga like dance or any kind of um, exploratory um, <coughs> form of expression, you want to release yourself a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And so why is it that the art of dance and movement right. brings out the sensuality of a person and the, the ability to express themselves? So we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk more in depth on how we treat our bodies and how we um, allow ourselves to be open enough to go that far to take in more. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, we'll come back and talk about that. This is Steve Katz. I'm a marriage and family therapist, and I do shrink wrap, which is now going to every other week, all during the summer and maybe forever after. Take care of your mental health this summer. Have a good time. Do what's fun and take good care of yourself. Bye-bye. Aloha and Happy New Year. It's 2017. Please keep up with me on Power Up Hawaii, where Hawaii comes together to talk about a clean and just energy future. Please join me on Tuesdays at 1 o'clock. Mahalo. Aloha. My name is Richard Emery, host of Condo Insider. More than a third of Hawaii's population live in some form of association. And our show is all about educating board members and owners about the responsibilities and obligations and providing solutions for a great association. You can watch me live on Thursdays 
3 p.m. to 4 p.m. each week. Aloha. Back here in Quok Talk, so we're talking about um, our bodies and, and layers of things that we envelop and hold in and sometimes need to release. So back to here with Charlotte and Shinru. Um, let's talk about nudity. How, how, why do you guys feel about that and how much of that nudity is uh, associated with being vulnerable? Do you, do you equate the two or Shinru, what do you think? Uh, <laughs> Yes and no. Um, I mean, I'm quite comfortable with my body. So, um, and I think, <clears throat> like we were talking about, it's a cultural thing. So yeah. some people are very okay showing their skin. It doesn't mean much. It's, you know, other things that make them feel vulnerable. Um, and I think in my work, um, as, I, as I was talking about with the body, it's, it's super revealing. You're just there. You're live. <laughs> if, you, if you make a mistake or if you fall or whatever, you know, there you are. Um, and so for me, I feel vulnerable um, in my body, but I also see that as its power. Okay, let's talk about that. So mm -hmm. why is vulnerability a possible power? Um, because I think, I think when you go into your weaknesses, or your weak, I mean, I don't, I don't consider vulnerability a weakness, but I think huh. when you go into those softer spots, yeah, tender. let's say, it's tender, right, or, or what, my, what some people may consider weakness, uh -huh. when you go there, you're not scared of them. You're actually, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're making friends with them and they're, you're opening that. So it's, it's not a, don't see this, you know, it's actually, here it is, there's nothing to be scared of. And there's something really empowering about about that process. Mm. Other people may still see it as weakness or as, you know. Well, that's a layer covering up their ability right. to confront it's that. Their, it's right. their perception of, right. of that. But if you're saying, here I am, and you're owning that, and it's part of, um, it's, you know, you have agency, you have that saying, you have the ability to say, this is me, um, then there's, you're not afraid of it, right? So then it it's becomes part of your, your, your sense of self. Hmm and um, your power if you want to use it that way and i mean it's very complicated in what you said like in a real setting of, of yeah. uh you know you're at a bar or right. something like yeah. that yeah forget the bar we scrapped <laughs> the yeah, bar yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Said no. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah in a performance way or just in terms of my body you know how do i feel in my body and if i'm comfortable then um of course i'm still vulnerable to external source uh external things but um being embodied and having a, comf a sense of comfortability. I mean, being at a certain level of this is who I am. Um, it's very hard to get to that point, though, yeah. right? Mm. Yeah, and it's ebb and flow. I don't think, you know, you stay yeah. there. Yeah, it's like you don't want to stay yeah. there. No, It's too tender. Right. Right. You yeah. want to have a shell once in a while, especially mm -hmm. in New York. I mean, you, mm -hmm. you, right? You need to have that. It's funny. I, I would say growing up, so that, you know, they say that you're, you're most sensitive about your body around like your teenage right, years right. and when you're becoming into your, your, your body and yourself. Yeah. Um, through my whole childhood, through all growing up, I never thought about body image huh. or anything like that growing up in Hong Kong. I was very comfortable with myself and very confident. Then when it to, I went to the States uh, for university, um, freshman year was okay, but then once, I think suddenly somewhere something changed in sophomore year. And my body was changing as well. Uh, it wasn't, you know, a little girl's body anymore, but... Late bloomer, sophomore yeah. in college. <laughs> yeah, it was, well, I think it was more of kind of... Um, I was un I was understanding that people compared themselves to oh, each other. Oh, okay. Where in Hong Kong, definitely growing up with my group of friends and also in this the, the small bubble that I, I, I had, mm. we didn't really see that. And but maybe it's also in that. Asia, people covered themselves up more. Right. They had more layers there. Mm -hmm. So you come to the States and everyone's all opening right, up to exactly, things, yeah. right? Exactly, yeah. And also I felt that the culture here um, was much more focused on working on bodies, where in, yes, in Hong right. Kong, mm -hmm. I feel like, again, there's two, there's the, you know, the uh, two different populations, and I was in this very small, like, international right. population, where I feel like the local um, Chinese, um, they're, they just naturally are very, very small and, and, and skinny, yes. whereas, you know, I had all shapes of sizes of, of friends, because from all over the place, <laughs> um, but we never, you know, it wasn't, 
exercising and like dieting and all of that was never a thing. But here. And then I went to the States and everyone was like, <laughs> we need to go to the gym, we need to eat healthy. Like if you're not eating healthy, like why, you know, you're not taking care of your body right. Um, and so that all kind of came in suddenly and I was like, oh, do I need to be doing this? And like, do I need to be looking at my body in a okay. different way? Um, and so, so your self-reflection kind of opened up yeah. more, explosively yes, in the States. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. What about the concept of transparency? Do you think that's the same as nudity? Mm, no, I don't think so. Like, you mean transparency in the sense of you allow people to see yeah. the sides of you? Yeah. I think that's what I meant by, you know, just because you show your skin doesn't mean you're showing You're revealing. Much. Right. You're, right. right. You're revealing. I and I think, and saying, like, people are very comfortable in the States, I don't necessarily think so. There's a lot of body image issues. Yes. There's a lot of, a lot. I'm showing mm -hmm. myself, but I'm really insecure yes. right. about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. So I think, yeah, being nude and showing showing is not necessarily revealing. And mm -hmm. again, that's why we kind of contemplate the concept of layers, because Nudity is just one layer. It's not what's underneath, really. It's mm -hmm. not that simple, is it? No. How do we empower the concept of um, being intimate? Because sometimes I think intimacy is that is that kind of vulnerable space that people um, are very kind of susceptible to getting into, like in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Can I, do you mind sharing, like you had a recent breakup and um, the reason for it, can you just share that so we can kind of... Um, I mean, it was it was a recent. It was a something that we, you know, started seeing each other, and then it kind of, definitely in the beginning for me, what I was nervous about was I was very happy by myself, and I know how to make myself happy, and so I think letting in someone was definitely a barrier that I had to kind of reveal or peel off, um, because once I could let someone else or something else kind of start being part of that happiness that I was creating. Um, I was very nervous that if that was suddenly taken away, then it would be very hard for me to get back to just me being, creating my own happiness. And so letting, letting someone in was definitely something that was terrifying because again, it's like showing that vulnerability yeah. of, of letting someone else into your life and ha being able to create that, that happiness for you um, alongside obviously creating your own happiness. But it was, when, once that's taken away, you know, there's this whole other, there's this gap where you're like, okay, now I have to fill that in again right. by just me. But the, um, so you were comfortable, you, you exposed yourself, if you will, mm -hmm. um, and allowed somebody to come into your life. Yes. But the point where you kind of like wanted to take it somewhere further to kind of, um, clarify right. where the situation mm -hmm. is. What, what's going on? What are we? Yeah. And then, then it, it took him. It scared him away. Yeah. So what, what? What do you think that is about that vulnerability? Uh, you know, <laughs> it's like why are guys so afraid of that type of <laughs> revealing? You laugh, Shinru, but you do. Oh, just, that's just another whole can of words. Uh, <laughs> clearly, we could talk so hours about this. Um, but, I don't know if it's a guy and girl thing. I mean, I think that's a stereotype for yeah. sure, um, that women tend to be able to be more open um, or want to to go to that place of right. vulnerability and men maybe don't. But I don't, I, I don't think that men don't want to. I just think that um, we all, women, men, the whole spectrum, we're all, don't, not, don't necessarily have the tools to communicate mm -hmm. what we need and how we need it. Hmm. Um, but I, I think we all want that, right? We all want intimacy, whether it's with our partners or our family or our community. There's a sense of wanting the same with touch. Like, we all need it in some, some way. Yes. We mm -hmm. need affection. We're, we're social animals. So, I don't know. I laughed because I think, you know, I wish, I wish we all had more tools for that because mm -hmm. I think we all want it. Yeah. yeah. That's true. I mean, we all want to reveal something. I mean, yeah. we all want to be seen and, and, felt, and understood and... I think, right? Am I yeah. right in that saying I, that? I would agree, definitely. I think it's it's coming into really accepting that that's what you want, because I think that yeah. I think that there is this this almost like stigma to mm. to wanting that for some reason. So a lot of people put up that yeah, put those layers on because they don't want to to, to, confront to say that. yes, I, like I, I want this. that. Yeah, yeah and I, I need that. Yeah. Um, it's bizarre, and I definitely you know I I, I reflect on that a lot as well where. I definitely think sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't need that from someone else. I have it by myself. I am very sufficient and, and able, just me, but 
you know, it is. It's something that we all we all want from right. something from someone else, right? As well, so. And that goes back to the importance of vulnerability, is to be able to tap into those feelings to say, hey, it's okay to feel a little bit soft, yeah. right? We built so many shells on our, on our, on our exterior in our lives. Um, Shinra, I want to go back to your workshop because it's, really, it's a really interesting concept of exploring um, and why you came about this and, and what this culminates to next week in your yeah. performance. Um, yeah, how do, I, how do I sum this up? So yeah, I started off um, just exploring the idea of vulnerability and actually started with nudity. So okay. it was just the topic was nudity and we were doing, um, creating, I was creating a solo about that. Uh, and then it started going into layers and vulnerability. And then now I did a solo uh, and duet version of that. Um, and now it's becoming a community workshop uh, performance project where vulnerability and exploring that really got me into uh, the topic of empathy. So by opening up ourselves and saying, I need this, or I want this, or this is who I am, other people were able to feel me and I would feel them more as a performer and audience. Uh, and then I also think live theater and live performance uh, creates a sense of a resonance in, the, in that moment that many of the other things that we use for entertainment or whatever do not, like you know, through YouTube or a screen, you don't mm. have the live interaction, you don't have the feelings of breath and vibration. So that's you know, what I'm trying to do through this workshop performance project is through the workshop with the participants is saying, okay, let's, let's experience this for ourselves and then let's open it up and invite an audience into that experience of uh, the things we talked about, you know, the, the different activities of, of breath, of, of touch, of being blindfolded, of trusting each other, um, and then how do we bring an audience into experiencing that as well. Yeah. So how do you? <laughs> we'll see. It's happening next Tuesday. Right. Um, and it's been really great to have you guys as part of the workshop. Maybe you can talk about your experience in it. But um, it's so for me, it is again about bringing people into an immersive experience, not just saying, hey, look, look at me dance. It's not going to be looking at us as performers and them as audience. There's not going to be that differentiation as mm. much, I hope, as but inviting them into our experience uh, and then seeing what they take away. How can it. people buy tickets or uh, be a part of this? Uh, it's everything should be running on my website. Uh, it's Body Portal Theater. Uh, that's body portal theater t h e a t r e dot com, uh, and it's happening next Tuesday at Kakaago Agora uh, at seven o'clock and nine o'clock. Uh, there's going to be two shows, and uh, yeah, it's a great space. I don't know if yes, it's, it's an amazing space. space. They provided uh, lots of community programming yeah. through the last couple of years, and uh, they so come and join this. Yeah. I mean, it's really, really interesting, and it's it's a really it's a real treat to be engaged with the intimacy of yourself and others. And Charlotte in, was involved with that. And thank you for coming to Hawaii to visit and share your experiences and uh, wishing everybody to be in touch with your own bodies and your own layers. And it's okay to peel them off because it's, it's good. Get some fresh air in, in <laughs> some places that never see the sun. Um, so thank you for tuning in. And again, support them. And good luck with all your stuff in the future. Thank right? You. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.